I'm Felicity and I'm coming to you from the sunny southern coast of the UK and today I'm going to be making with you some lavender bags and not only am I going to be showing you how to make lavender bags I'm going to be showing you how to dry lavender that you have in the garden. Now I have to admit I'm not really a very lacy ribbony type of person until the lavender comes out in my garden and then I change and I love all things white cotton, white organza, a ribbon and lace. I don't know why but that's what lavender does for me. I always think of it as lovely white, goes with white and oh yes all pretty and lovely. Right so First of all, I'll show you what I've made. Um, there we go, little lavender bags. And I'm going to show you how to free embroider these very, very quickly. Some of it is just straight machine stitching, but there's also some free embroidery a little bit to show you. I have made some lavender bags. You could use the same design on some um, serviettes. I've made some or napkins or serviettes, whatever you want to call them. Um, and also, I have made this beautiful organza tablecloth with a little bit of lace around it. It's cute, so quick to do this and also great for little gifts, um, even for Christmas, pop them in a stocking. Or if you're doing some sort of charity work and you want to make some quite quickly, um, this is much quicker than hand embroidery. Um, I actually don't do hand embroidery. I wouldn't have a clue, quite honestly. But this will do. It looks effective and it's pretty. So let me show you what you need. Now, I will put all this in the description below. You will need a sewing machine, which either has um, a drop feed on it so you can drop the feed dogs down or with your machine you may have got a plate that you can put over the top a plastic plate of the teeth okay because so, you don't need those teeth working for you okay you want them either covered up or moved down M normally if you've got um, a drop feed on your machine you will find a, a little switch at the um, at the front or even the back. Right, the other thing you will need is a free embroidery foot. This is the one I prefer. This one has an open toe to it. Okay, so that's that. You will need a pen that you can draw with but will disappear. Okay, you don't want it disappearing too quickly. Some of them disappear too quick so it actually disappears before you've even done the work. Um, so a pen like that, um, some thread. Now I chose to use this, this is actually a, a quilting thread, a Guterman quilting thread and the number I've used is 9837. You might like to use that, that's a quilting thread. I couldn't get the right colour in the ordinary, in the quilting thread so I have to make do with this one which is the 100% polyester which is fine. And the number on this one is 391. I think that's right. Yeah, 391 on that. Right, so you will also need a hoop. I use a six inch hoop. Um, must have a hoop to do this, I'm afraid. Some ribbon. Probably will want to put some ribbon. I've just got a quarter inch satin ribbon. I like to use a darker colour. Um, I like the darker colour personally, but that's up to you. And plenty of thread on your spools. Do not run out of thread when you're doing this because it will be very frustrating. Now I'm just going to demonstrate to you on how to make one of the smaller lavender bags. So I have cut, I'm using cotton organza, but of course you can use cotton of any sort, even an old cotton sheet or um, pillowcase, anything like that will be fine. So I this piece measures 
12 inches by 5 inches and I will put all the information in the description below. Right, so I'm just, oh no, first of all, this is my lavender from the garden. This is how I dry my lavender. Um, I've normally got more on the plate than this, but don't have too much because otherwise it steams. Now I do mine in the microwave and I do the set in for two inches. And once the stem snaps, when you take it out, you know that they're dry enough. If not, just pop them in for another 30 seconds. Okay, that's how I do mine um, really, really quick. The other thing I do, um, which it's probably cheating I don't know but I always put a little bit of lavender oil in mine because um, generally by the time I've dried them they don't smell of anything very much so a couple of drops of lavender oil is what I use in a box shake them up leave them in there for a little while fabulous right I'm gonna pop off now well I'm not gonna pop off anyway I'm just gonna get the machine loaded up and you want it loaded with green. So here's your piece of fabric, which is five inches by 12 inches. You need to fold it in half and find a halfway mark there. And you also need to fold in half this way just to get a straight line, which is there. Okay, now, you need to do a three inch line on the halfway mark going up. So just lay it on there and start just under um, half an inch from the bottom. You don't want it going up too high. Otherwise it will take up room where you're going to put your tie. Then you have this line here. Three inches again, start up the same amount, so about there. Okay, and another line, the other side, that will go about there, try and keep them quite even. Now the other thing that I like to do is to put um, just a, um, a couple of blades of grass, uh, sorry, blade, blades of leaves, going like that. It doesn't have to be the same both sides, just a little bit like that. Okay, so we're going to start off with green thread. You don't need your um, free embroidery for, for this piece and it's just straight stitching and don't drop your feet. So first things first, I normally like to go up and down for the green, so I come down, okay, to there, turn, whoops, gosh, on top of your previous stitching or just to the side, whatever, just makes it a little bit more um noticeable so then when i come down to there this is where you go on to your next piece so then you come down there you go on to your next stem from the crossover piece so we're going to go up here it doesn't matter if you do two or three or however many you feel you want to do all right so I'm going to do that amount then I'm going to come up there and I'm going to go down there turn Right, so now I'm going to do the leaf. The leaf needs to be a little bit, a little bit wider, I'd say. So go backwards and forwards a few times. And 
Now, when I do bigger pieces like the tablecloth, I think I did seven, always keep it an even number of stems that you do. So three, five or seven as I did, I think, on the tablecloth. Right, so just made that a little bit more identifiable as a leaf. And then up there. Backwards and forwards a few times. Don't worry about the uh, ink because that will disappear. It may take a day or two to disappear, but it will disappear. Or it can be washed out. But be careful what you buy. All right, some of them are air erasable but if you iron over the top of them they stay forever so be careful okay so i've almost finished that i'm gonna just come down to there okay and that will do for that one and i'm now going to change over to the purple to do the uh, petals i'd just like to show you how the free embroidery foot goes on um this piece here must go over the top of the screw that's coming out here okay so you hook it round here like so gosh that's it hook it in there where the screw is here tighten that up but make sure that this the piece I just showed you is sticking out and is coming over the top of this screw, which is where your needle goes in, where you tighten the needle up. I know that some people, when they do free um, motion embroidery, they change settings. I don't. I don't change any settings. Um, and I keep it on a number three stitch. Right, so when you're doing this, make sure you keep this in one piece. Don't cut it uh, because you won't get it in your hoop if you do. Now, the this piece of material, the piece, the piece of material we're using, needs to go on the biggest hoop, the biggest one. Lay it over, put this on the top of it and pull it so it's reasonably tight. Okay, and you know if you've got it right because this has got to go laying flat on your bed. So one of the most important things we've got to do when we do free embroidery is make sure that both of your pieces of um, thread from the bottom and the top are together on the top of your work. So pull both threads up together. There we go. And do that at a place where you want to start. Now, with the free embroidery foot, it goes up and down and up and down. And sometimes you can think that it's up and it's down and you can think it's down and it's up. All right. So clamp down. Always check your clamps down. And this is how I do free embroidery for lavender. So we keep it that way, vertical, slightly vertical, up you go, up the stem, keep going, keeping it vertical, don't worry if you go wrong, it's the most easy thing to do, alright, up we go, I'm not brilliant at this either, right, so then you want the one going up at the top and then you're coming back down and out. I go out two or three times. Lavender is not that perfect if you look at it. Down and over and down and over and down and over and down and over and down over down over down over. Okay that's one stem done. So then what you do, you wind your, your hand wheel towards you slightly and move over to your next stem. No need to cut it off and start again. Absolutely fine to do that. 
okay make sure that your thread isn't hooked around like mine is at the moment isn't hooked around your um your foot okay i think i'll start this time this time up the stem and over into the side over done try and get them to go um vertical if you can i haven't done a very good job there but i'm sure you get the idea don't you so i'm just going to carry on and do the next one i've now removed the free embroidery foot and i have also remembered to bring my feed dog up after lowering them um what was one of those things sometimes you forget and it's very irritating when you try to machine and your feed dogs are down so anyway so <clears throat> you could embroider the um the ribbon on the front here as i've done on this one here but i don't know i quite like a ribbon on there really to tie so i've got a needle here with a really big hole and I'm just going to tie a bow on the front there and later on I will put a stitch in it too to keep the bow together that's it we'll just tie a nice little bow and I am actually going to do uh, a French seam down here so you want your right side facing you, not the wrong side. And I'm just going to quickly machine down here, taking a very narrow seam. Number two, I keep it on number two, oh, sorry, number three most of the time. So we're going to go down there. Back stitch. narrow seam less than a quarter of an inch down the other side that will do fine Turn it through the wrong way. Poke it with a needle or something. Don't poke it right the way through though. Just to keep a nice sharp corner. Right, fold that down there. Just fold it over with your fingers. And I'm just going to come up like this on both both sides. Right, so I've now uh, machined encasing the seams in there to make it nice and neat. Particularly if you've got something that you can see through light organ. So it's quite nice to not have to see raw edges through. There we go. Then the next thing we've got to do is um, turn in the top edge. Now, always it's a very narrow piece, so I would turn it over first 
don't do a, very, a lumpy seam, a really heavy seam because it's only very lightweight fabric. It would look a bit ugly if it had a huge seam at the top. And not only that, um, you don't want to take too much off, otherwise you won't be able to have any uh, above the gathering when you tie the ribbon round. Right, so that has to go over once, go over twice, put it onto the machine and just fold it as you go. Don't try and iron it over or anything like that because quite frankly, uh, it's too, it's only a, a very small area to turn this over. Okay, so I'm gonna go right the way around with this. And then all we need to do is put the lavender in and I forgot to say actually sometimes I do put a little bit of wadding in as well with the lavender just to bulk it out because I think that it sometimes looks better if it's got more in it and you know the amount of lavender that you would need to really bulk it out is quite is quite a lot okay so that's that done and I'm now going to put the lavender in and I'm going to tie it at the top and we're done. We are done. So here we are. Here's the little lavender bag. All we've got to do now is fill it with lavender, which I have here in a pot. Let's get some lavender in there. Now, as I say, sometimes I do also add some wadding to it. Yeah, let's put a little bit of wadding in there, just at the top there, so that we don't obscure the pattern of the lavender after working so hard on it. There we go. So I had a piece cut there. I don't know what happened to that. It's not on there. Oh, here we are. So I'm just going to tie that round. I'll show you in a moment. Tie it round, put a bow or just tie. And there we are. There's the lavender finish. Just a minute sliding undone there so that's not so good there we go one little beautiful lavender bag and I really hope that you now understand how to do free embroidery it was easy wasn't it and I must say a huge thank you to the cameraman um, who, without his help, I wouldn't have been able to get that close enough. And please, may I ask you to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy what you see. Um, I enjoy showing you and I will be back next week, either Friday or Saturday. And next week, I think I'm going to show you how to make some hats hats sun hats hats like you've never seen before because i designed them and they are different and i will also give you a free pattern to download okay bye for now thanks for staying until the end see you soon bye for now